Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lyceum here at Casadega. We're happy to have you. Uh, thank you for joining us on the live stream. We're going to finish up our talk about natural law, which we've been talking about all month. Next month, we're going to talk the month about uh, physical phenomenon. So I like to keep one subject for the entire month, bring in some guest teachers, and give you different aspects of the subject. So you have a handout. We talked about natural law. It's basically nature's law, what goes on in nature, what they've seen, uh, everything happens in a pattern, everything happens for a reason. So they started creating these natural laws. Our guests, our two guest teachers also talked about natural law, what it meant to them and how uh, they apply to their lives. So this book, Natural Law Governs, uh, if you want to purchase it, I do believe we sell it in the bookstore, or we did it one time. And it has a lot more of the natural laws in it. It doesn't have every single one of them, but I picked eight or nine of them, of them for, us to, for us to talk about today. So it's open discussion, as always. I want to hear what you think about the laws or what, how they feel or vibrate to you. We, all, we always talk about the law of attraction. We talked about that uh, a lot. Basically, the law says what you put out, you receive. Good or bad, positive or negative, what you put out is what you receive back. So if we know this to be a law, we should always try to put out more positive than we do, God bless you, than we do non-positive, correct? Mm -hmm. As we put out more positive, do we then in our mind expect good things to happen? Yes or no? Do we yes. expect it? No. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, no, yes, yes. no. Yeah. Let's go to the yes Power side positive. first. <laughs> Why do you expect it to happen, Corey? Because I'm uh, manifesting it. I'm, okay. I'm creating it. It's what I expect to be a product of my manifestation. Perfect. Why do you say no? Because I'm not attached. I do what I do because I do it. I'm not attached to what comes back. Okay. I'm always kind of surprised when it does. <laughs> Delightful. So, yes, Darlene. I think that the, the word expect is separate from deserve. You don't deserve. You just put it out there and you can get it that's life. Perfect. Both of you, everyone's right. There is no really, there is no wrong answers. The only wrong answer is not doing anything. That would be a wrong answer. But yes, Corey expects something back, but it's not like he's demanding it. It's just his reality he's created. You don't expect it back because you just know it's going to happen naturally, correct? Okay, same thing. Same thing, just worded different ways. Can anyone give me an example in their daily life where the law of attraction worked for them? And I give, I always give examples. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. A friend invited me on a trip, and my husband said, well, we can't really afford it. It's going to be $1,000 right. for the weekend. And I said, yeah, don't worry, it's all expenses paid. And he said, by whom? I said, I haven't decided. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped at the grocery store on the way home, and I bought one of those scratch-off tickets, and I won $1,000 exactly. Perfect. And I go, I decided. <laughs> <laughs> But so I made the reservations, I had my tags packed, I had everything, I had no idea where the money was going to come from. Whoa. See, that's, that's putting a lot yes, of faith, too. putting faith into it. But you put the energy in motion. You didn't block it with, I can't afford it. At that second, you could not afford it, but you knew you could afford it in the future. So you went ahead with emotion. You got the energy built up. And then it happened. Okay. Now, what would have happened if the money didn't manifest itself? What would have been your mindset then? Um, I probably 
would have figured out a way to earn some extra money or Oh you're going regardless. I was going. Okay. <laughs> It was. was So if the energy did not manifest the thousand dollars between that time and the time of the event, maybe something else would have come up. You manifested something to happen and it happened. Anyone else? I still like it's a running joke with me. I still try to manifest that lottery money, but it will. It'll happen one day. Did you have your hand up? Okay. So the law of balance. Everything, a lot of times when I'm talking, I'm talking my opinion, of course. In, in my life, everything has to be balanced. I can't be out of balance. Can't be. Everything has to be balanced. Okay. How do you always balance in your life? It's not always easy. It's not always easy. Doable, but not easy. I think. Yes. The first step for me is noticing when I'm out of balance. That's exactly right. You know, don't let the momentum get to where I'm crazy. It's like as soon as I feel a little tinge of something's not right, I stop. Right. And just stop. Something doesn't feel right. Something's just a little off. I'm not sure what it is. It's what I tell myself. So, hey, John, we've missed you. So I, you, you miss me too? Thank you, John. So I have to stop, maybe not right that second, center myself and my thoughts and say, okay, where's the balance off? What is this? Is there someone at work that's throwing me off? Is it someone in my house? Well, it's just me in my house, but it could be someone in your house throwing you off. What is it? What's throwing you off? And then you, oh, well, that's what it is. So you try to find a balance. It's got to be balanced in my world. It's got to be balanced. Can you give me a time? Where you felt off balanced, and what did you do to bring yourself back to balance? Yes. Like if I get grumpy, mm -hmm. I've started um, trying to be conscious of when I get grumpy, or when somebody's even around me is grumpy. Instead of reacting to it and feeding into it, I try to turn it around in more of a positive way. Like yep. the other night, my husband, I got home, he was grumpy. So instead of feeding into it and arguing with him, I just tried to put him in a better mood, and it worked. So. Well, it's Is that good. what you're talking about? Absolutely. You have to have that balance and harmony at home. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. It is hard. <laughs> but like, like they were saying, you have to realize you're out of balance. You have to realize how you can bring yourself back into balance. And sometimes it's, you have to let go of something or someone. You have to let it go. I have to let go of a situation. Okay, recently my job duties changed the last three weeks. Like I mentioned during a lecture, I applied for a job within my department and did not get it. But then a year later, it kind of came open and I got it. So I'm now more balanced than what I was a year ago. So I can feel it. I can feel it. It's a good feeling. Plus, I moved home. I moved last within the last year. I moved houses also, because where I was, I no longer felt balanced, or the energy just wasn't where I wanted to be anymore. Okay, so you look for the balance. Moving a house is an expensive way of balancing, but it works. <laughs> Very expensive. So, the law of balance. The second paragraph, the law commands that all actions of any nature between pairs of opposites in nature or between man must be equal and balanced. Just like you were saying with your husband being grumpy, there is that unbalance. You have to find balance in your life. Yes, sometimes it is easier for me to point out something about me than to wait for someone else to point it out. <laughs> 
but it's a self-realization. Cause and effect. Every action has an appropriate reaction. There's no exception to this law. Each of us sets this law in motion every day, every moment of every day as we think, as we act. You have to realize everything you do in life. The moment you wake up to go to bed, everything you do throughout the day, you're creating a cause and effect. No matter how um, small your action is or how large your action is, it's a cause and effect. I'm always talking about going down I-4 here and there. My choice, if I want to be, if I want to stay in the right lane, which is the slow lane, which is the lane I never visit, I'm always in the left lane, the fast lane, because I just enjoy getting to where I'm going. It's a choice. It's a balance, cause and effect. I go over the speed limit. There's a chance I'm going to get a speeding ticket. Should I get upset when I get the speeding ticket? No, I created it by speeding. Okay, it's cause and effect. Every time you introduce yourself to a person or say hello to a person, you're creating a cause and effect. Okay, when they talk to you, they're creating a cause and effect. So realize when people are talking to you, you must be conscious of what you're saying back to keep everything balanced. Cause and effect. Any comments on that? In the examples. John, in the examples, you're quiet today. You haven't been here for I'm a week. I was going to say, most of the time I say nothing. That's my answer. When, it, when you're talking to people? Or when I'm disagreeing with them. Instead of, you know, having an argument, I'm bringing up my side of the story. You're absolutely right. I don't say nothing. And that usually serves me good. Because usually when I do disagree, I'm not nice about it. <laughs> so I, I have a bad attitude or something. I don't know. My words are not right. But I always wind up saying, man, why don't you shut up? You know, to myself. You know? Because well, I'm, I'm very harsh. There's nothing wrong with saying nothing. It's okay. That's, that's my game. But saying nothing is it actually doing something you're doing nothing but you're doing something so it's consciously you're choosing not to answer which is fine i do that i'll just i'll just stop talking because i'm thinking yes sir not a, <clears throat> excuse me and that in itself avoids a confrontation correct you just remove yourself from this saying, well i'm not going to argue with them right you know, then there is no argument because they need to have two people to argue <laughs> Now, actually, I've seen people on the road arguing with themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, normally it takes two people. Yes? Yeah, I'm a little bit more forthright at times. And um, there was an incident, and I happened to be on my way to, the, to, to church up north, to this very Jewish church I, I go to when I'm in Rhode Island. Uh -huh. And um, it was a hot summer day. And I was stopping for my usual iced tea at Cumberland Farms, and on the counter, there was a couple, a young couple there, and walking on the counter where you prepare your coffee and everything was this like three-year-old. Now I can see mother, no hands, trying to do coffee and kid, having the kid at the edge of the counter. But at this point, the kid is walking around the coffee on the counter that I'm going to prepare my drink on. Mm -hmm. So I say, you shouldn't be there. The, and I'm usually nice, but this was just <laughs> like, such an imposition. And, um, it was the only was, counter space to put your coffee on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the coffee. So I'm, so I'm there and I say, well, you shouldn't have the child on the counter. You know, like I say, a baby mother with no hands, I can see. But he was just having fun walking around the counter. My counter. <laughs> Your counter. <laughs> so I said something. And the
the return for it, I don't think was appropriate. I felt threatened. This is a guy with the leather jacket, I just didn't, and I didn't Pro see ball. him. I didn't just say the mother and the kid. And um, so I felt threatened and I was glad to leave and I mentioned it to the people at the, at the front taking my money as I left and I said, did you see that child? And they said, well, he shouldn't have been there. <laughs> so I go to church and I say to my pastor, I don't think I was acting appropriately. <laughs> And my pastor says, well, we all have times, and the child shouldn't have been on, walking on the counter like that. <laughs> so, uh, cause and effect. Mm -hmm. But my pastor said, it's right to be offended by something that Im it incorrectly imposes on my space. Well, because you've said something different. I thought I said it right. <laughs> I didn't. No, I, I was nicer than usual because I felt like I that. And, uh, and I just said, it's just like, but the, I went to the pastor. I said, I, did, I just don't feel like I was very, you know, spiritual. I should have been thinking and this and that. And, uh, but I think it's sometimes it's, it may be appropriate to say things. That are going to have a negative effect on you. <laughs> we do. Uh, I'll get upset and I'll say some choice words, but then it's over. <laughs> I get back in my lane and keep going. You know, there's always a bigger dog in that left lane, <laughs> and I realize that. <laughs> Being a truck driver, you know that, right? I know that. There's always a bigger dog. And it's okay for them to have that lane for a little while. I'll move over. <laughs> They'll be way up the road, then I'll get back in it. It's greatly appreciated. Yes. <laughs> Cause and effect. The law of compensation. The law of compensation dispenses out to man. When we say man, we know it's man, woman. This is written uh, 40 years ago. Uh, justly his payment for his own actions, be they good or be they indifferent. Whatever the case, this law automatically exerts itself for reward or punishment distributions. So how would you set yourself up for punishment? Hmm. No. Why would you set yourself up for punishment? Why would that be your end game? Let's take the opposite of what we normally would say. Anyone? Yes, sir. Excellent. Sometimes it does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great example. Anything else? Do sometimes we we uh, beat ourselves up for no reason? Yes, John. When I was young, I. I I messed up a lot of chances to have a rewarding and richly filled life mm -hmm. because of my undisciplined lifestyle. And, and after that was over, like 10 years of that nonsense, destroying whatever I worked for, and I worked hard for it. So now I had this uh, thing on my head like, you know, what did you do that for? You messed up so many things. Uh, and I went through another 10 years of beating myself up. And then I came to the conclusion, I, I want to stop doing this. I pray to God for forgiveness. And I, you know, so I do the right thing, and I've been doing it ever since. It's much better. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't beat myself up for it anymore. Good. I do what I did. I, I messed up what I messed up. Can't get it back. Can't get those opportunities back. Can't get that money back. Can't get those relationships back. You know? And um, so you have to forgive yourself. Because we know as spiritualists we follow the principles the door to reformation is never closed against any soul here and hereafter. So we know we can change things on the earth plane or we could change things on the spirit side. 
we still have that chance. Yes, sir. I notice sometimes uh, events will happen to me, like you say, mostly in a car driving somewhere, someone will cut you off or this or that. And my immediate reaction, of course, is uh, anger. <laughs> but then I take a breath and say, you know, when I was younger, I used to do the same thing. <laughs> and I was lucky and got away with it. And, right. uh, and this case, he was lucky and he got away with it. And uh, I approach it more as an understanding that it was nothing personal about it. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of your process of growing up. You, you do things that later on you may not do. But you, we now, as we get older and wiser, we choose how to react. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we're reacting better than we did previously. Um, a lot of my stories I tell are I-4 stories. One day coming over, I was in the middle lane. I wanted to get in the left lane because <laughs> I just love the left lane. Uh, it's my lane. And there was enough space for me to get over safely there was a lot of traffic going on and what I didn't know is a little further up traffic was stopping slowing down dramatically I didn't know that so I probably could be um, described as cutting someone off but in my mind there was enough space for me to go ahead and speed up but no when I cut over traffic stopped I had to stop. They had to stop, you know, really quick. And I actually pulled over to the far, far left lane, which is really in the lane, because I didn't want to hit the car in front of me. But what the person behind me did was veer off to the left, got beside me, and really, without touching my car, pushed me back to the middle lane. <laughs> A bigger dog. <clears throat> you know, I had lots of opportunities to say something ugly and do something ugly, but I was in the wrong. So, okay, let me back to, let me tail between my legs and let me get back to the middle lane. I've learned my lesson. Then I actually went to the far right lane and hung out there because I was really thinking I did something bad. <laughs> Go hang out in the very slow lane for a little while, catch my attitude up. Yeah, cause and effect. People should try to exercise some patience. <laughs> yes. I, I'm from Ohio. I, I don't know if they, they do the, if anybody knows anything about the cement system. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like everybody in Florida could really use it. Aim high in steering, always leave yourself an out. Um, I'm sure you've heard of the cement system. Um, everybody in Florida needs, needs to learn that. It, it would be so much easier. And people would be so much happier on the road on i -Polar. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Once the construction stops, maybe it'll be pleasant, yeah. more pleasant. Dream on. Yeah, yeah, I don't. <laughs> about four years or something like that. And if I'm looking at it correct, I don't know what they're doing, but there's looks like there's not going to be a special lane down the middle. I'm really excited. I don't know what that is, but it's, it looks like a special lane just for fast people. <laughs> well. It might be worth two dollars. <laughs> so yeah, so there's going to be a special lane coming up. I'm excited about that. <laughs> All right, turn. Um, I just would say, I go ahead. Quick for law compensation. Absolutely. I the other way. Okay. I was driving to work one day, and the DJ was talking about he was in a store, and something fell over, and he thought it was his grandmother. And she came to me in the car, I'm a medium, and uh, she wanted me to call the radio station. I'm like, I'm not calling the radio station. She's just call. So it's a big radio station. I said, I'm not going to get through. She's like, just call. So I call and I get through immediately. And she whispers to me, just say pink. So I say, I don't know, your grandmother's here. And she said, pink. And he was like, holy crap. He said, my grandmother wore pink from head to toe. Anyway, so I got done with the reading. He appreciated it. And I told my sister, and she's like, oh, well, he should have paid you for that. No. And I said, oh. I don't even think about that. I get compensated. I went home that night and I had purchased this pink pouch at a beauty supply. It was sealed and everything with polish in it. I opened it up and I reached in. There were seven $100 bills in there. 
In a pink pouch that I purchased at a, at a beauty supply. Really? That day, it was sealed up, wrapped, and everything, and I was like, I can thank you, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was, and, and as soon as I did it, I heard the words of my sister saying, you should have gotten paid for that. And I thought, oh, I will. So I think that was a lot of compensation. <laughs> that was it a was great a compensation. <laughs> yeah, I was screaming, yeah. running through the house, screaming. <laughs> I mean, it was very kind of unbalancing. <laughs> now the law of attraction would have said to you, the way that felt getting that seven $100 bills, that's how you should react to life every day. As if you just won or found seven $100 bills, because that will always keep your energy up and positive. So, yeah. But as we know, the law of compensation can also go the opposite way. Hopefully not too much. The law of retribution teaches us the same thing. What one sows, one must reap. The law of equ um, equity is that the law is giving to each person their just due does prevail. Okay, so the law of retribution. As you sow, so shall you reap. It all goes hand in hand with the rest. Yes, Corey. Um, is that how we send it out or how it's perceived? Because those would be two completely, you know, am I going to have to reap something that I didn't I, I, I meant to sow it in good intentions, but it was not perceived that way. Or bad mm -hmm. timing or, you know, whatever the case may be. That's an excellent point. I would think what your intent was might override how it was received. Yes, John. See, there's a lot of things. I'm always saying I want to be rich one day. I'm going to win the lottery. Oh, this is clearing out sweet cities, all this stuff. And I play these games. But um, I don't know what to do when I'm not addicted to it. I don't go crazy. If I get my lot, I'm going to win, you know. But uh, I um, I'm always hoping, you know, but nobody's going to come in all this stuff. I'm going to stuff, you know, guys like that. But I also know that I have to think that. You know, I'm healthy, I beat cancer twice, I, you know, I'm still here, I got hit by a car one time, I didn't get really bad damage, I could have, uh, a lot of things, um, I have brain damage and I'm, I'm okay now, you know, so I look at that, these are, these are wins, you know, these are big wins. Those are big wins, John. These are really big wins, you know, I'm still able to, you know, associate and be a civilization and all that good stuff, and be, I know how to read and, and I, these things can have easily been taken from me, you know. I had a track, I'm pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Everything's going good, and they didn't have to be. A little bit more push, a little bit more higher, and I mm. could be like in the mental institution, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, really, you, but you'd be happy, right? Times, you know? But you'd be happy. Well, I wouldn't know I would be happy. But I, you know, I have to look at myself like, man, I did win the lottery, you know. I, I, did, I, I, I did win the post screen out to me. It's just in a different way, not financially. Mm -hmm. But uh, other ways, you know, and uh, you have to be happy every day, whatever you do. I always look at that type of thing, you know. So, so yes, it may, it may, not, may, not, may not be financial or, or, or materialistic, but you know, like I jogged this morning, mm -hmm. you know, and it was beautiful. I seen a couple of deer, and they 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 didn't even run away from me, man. They see me every day. So they're used to you. Yeah, so, is, so to, cool. is today your birthday? Today? Yeah. No, 28. No, 28. Coming up. Yeah, getting old. <laughs> so, yes, um, I have not hit the lottery yet, but I'm still happy no matter what. I, I, you know, I'm still happy every day, as much as I can be. I just met this guy you might have heard about on the news because a few weeks back some guy was shot five times at a party mm -hmm. and apparently the cause you think, oh my God, horrible thing, what was he? He was defending his sister-in-law, just going verbally to ask some guy not to hit on his sister-in-law. 
and um, the guy pulled out a gun, shot him five times. Mm. I just met him, and I saw the limp, and that's how I found the story. And he's he goes around saying he's blessed. He's happy. And I think that's the ultimate example of somebody with a phenomenal attitude. Mm -hmm. And it You're shows right. in his personality. So he survived the five shots. He survived. He's lucky. Very blessed. Going into the law of, law of karma. Karma, if uh, properly understood, can at least give meaning to the retribution that we have to make, the compensation that we have to receive. Karma is interesting. A lot of people uh, believe in karma. Um, I'm not a big karma. I don't call it karma. It's just you know cause and effect. Cause and effect. Some people believe that if you don't pay the price here, you pay the price on the other side. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's just me. Any thoughts on karma? Yes, ma'am. I was there with karma until I read uh, Ramtha in the White Book. Mm -hmm. And it kind of put it together for me. And I I like that. I would agree with you. And all of these really do fall under the law of attraction, a lot of them. You're right. I don't I don't believe that you're when you go to the other side, you're uh, you're judged in any way. That's just my thoughts. Yes, sir. I think with her people are too consumed with the idea that if you're a good person, you deserve good things, and if you're a bad person, you deserve bad things. I think that's only half of the equation, because I also think it matters is how wise your actions are. So like, let's say you're a kind person, you're a generous person, you give your money to the poor and stuff, but then you go broke. You, and you're homeless yourself. Obviously, you didn't deserve that if we're just looking at <coughs> from a compassion angle, but you weren't really wise in your generosity. Right. So for me, karma is more of a balance of not necessarily your moral alignment, but the actual way you express it. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, it makes like, perfect sense. Like, if, like even a bad person could still have good things come to them because they're doing things in a smart way mm -hmm. that prevent negativity from coming to them to them sooner. So, I think and I like the word sooner <laughs> yeah. because we don't know when the compensation, positive or not positive, is going to happen. Yeah. It will happen. Yeah. Yes, Corey. I have a hard time with that whenever I think about um, children who are like terminally ill. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like they were born to die a painful death. You know, it's, it, I have a really hard time um, with the word karma when it comes to things like that. You know, it's like, did, Morning. did, did, did they do something? What, did they, I mean, they're, they're just, uh, I, I don't, I have a really hard time when it comes to that. I, I can't put reason or sense to why, uh, like St. Jude's and all that, like why are all these, uh, they're pretty much put here to die a painful death. So but, sometimes we have to look at the bigger picture. Right, and that's where that's where, you, that's where you're going. Yeah, with balance and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the karma that's really hard. Like, if if I had a child that was in that situation, what changes did I make in my life because of that child? Right. You have to look at the bigger picture. What joy did that child that's in pain bring you during that short? time. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I also look at karma and the fact of uh, 
thinking. In other words, some people go through life without thinking, mm -hmm. causing pain and suffering to others. So eventually, to show them where they might be wrong, that it starts coming back to them, and it'll keep coming back to them until finally it gets through to them. Right. How much pain and suffering they have caused other people. It wasn't how much, you know, you did this, so you're going to get that. The lessons keep coming until you finally have recognized mm -hmm. that you did some bad things, and that's a learning process, and I think that's more my yep. idea of karma. It's okay. a learning process. See, that's where, in the spirit of Martha, you would say that you chose in your soul you needed to experience different things. Even somebody that's an axe murder or some terrible person, for some reason, to be able to understand, your soul needed to go through that experience. And it makes what Corey says a little bit more palatable to me because the, the young baby that died, their soul chose and needed to know that experience. Right. And, it, and it's a And those around the, that individual. It's a learning thing for the soul. So if you look at the bigger picture on some of the topics, if you, we see the shows, and one example, how the profile sh you know, the, the crime scenes and they, the profilers that go in to solve the crimes. One way of looking at it, if there weren't those crimes, how could they profile to know what's gonna, they're gonna do next? You know, you're profiling, you learn habits of criminals. So if you didn't have that, if you see where I'm going, then you wouldn't have the profilers that could predict what they're gonna do next to solve a murder. You know, that's one way of looking at it. You need something in order to understand it better, even though it is bad, in our view. Did that make sense, or did I just pull that out of nowhere and it made no sense whatsoever? All right, law of consequence. Did we say that one yet? Sequence. Sequence. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, nothing ever occurs by chance. Once you get in your mind, yeah, if we could turn the phones off, that'd be great. Once we get it in our mind that everything needs to be in balance, but everything is a sequence, our lives would be so much easier. Not better, just I think easier. Because we know there's a consequence, we know there's a sequence, everything has to be in balance. I stay inside my house for the day. I'm not affecting anyone around me. I go outside my house and interact with people. It changes the ripple and the vibration. Okay, what were you gonna ask? I was gonna say, I thought about that. Like sometimes I'll do something, which I would say you know, something stupid right before I leave the house and it takes me an extra 15 minutes or whatever. And then I laugh and I say, I think mean, you might have just saved your life. Maybe there was That's a right. back truck that was gonna cross in front of you. You know, and you missed it, or you don't know. Everything you don't know. happens for a reason. That was the sequence for the day. Just go with the flow. And it's just been incredible since I stopped beating myself up for that and just know that everything happens for a reason. So nothing ever occurs by chance? I don't think so. No. Now, remember, you're talking about my world. In my world. I don't think so. Everything happens for a reason. Everything's in a sequence. Even years later, you know. It could be. It could like, be. Oh, I remember that one thing that one person said, or, you know, like every little piece of the puzzle. You know, we don't understand the puzzle, and I wish, I wish we would. But um, the, the little pieces are thrown at us at all different times, and whenever we need to use that piece, it tends to, I mean, you're here right now. And chance is almost like saying random. I don't. I think everything in in the world is in sequence. That's just me. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. And how do you put free will into that? Actually, you don't. 
Go ahead. Actually, um, this was actually kind of my thought that I wanted to say because I was going to address that. Um, when I was in college, there was a, I don't want to say she was Hindu, she was more of a Hindu mythology enthusiast. She was kind of talking about the nature of free will and predestination, Hinduism, and kind of like what's, which is which. And she said like they're both true that our future is predestined, but it's predestined by us. Like before we come into this life, we kind of choose what reality is best for us to learn, what what situations are best for us to get into, mm -hmm. for us to grow. So yes, there are circumstances that are beyond our control, but we chose before we came here to be in those circumstances. So like we. Corey, you picked this. You picked this life, Corey. Man, I, I have a really hard time with saying that I'm not chosen. I'm not growing. I'm growing. But yeah. What do you think after hearing that? You have free will. Yes, you have free will. You can get out of the bed. You can go outside. You can get in your car. Those are free wills. But everything you do is a consequence based on your free will. But also, I, I believe this master plan is in, in effect. So somewhere, somehow, someone knew that was not an actual person, a spiritual being, God, infinite intelligence, knew that sequence was going to happen in your life, regardless. Yeah, like, I do, I do believe in that, you know, everything happens for a reason, Absolutely. for a purpose, to serve your higher good. So I, I'm operating like that for sure. But then I question, you know, okay, I moved to Colorado. Was was that the right thing to do or should I have gone right to Florida? You know what I mean? Like that's... How long were you in Colorado? Three and a half years. Did you learn a lot there? Mm -hmm. There you go. As long as you come out of Colorado a better person, then it was the direction you should have taken. But could, sorry. It's all right. Go ahead. Could it also be in our cards to come out of Colorado in a worse situation? Say that again, Corey. Could it also have been in our cards to come out of Colorado in a worse situation? Yes. Could have. Hey, the, the free will thing. I, just... I, I, I guess where I go to is like, can you screw it up with your free will? <laughs> get get off a path that was perhaps predestined for you and for your higher good, but you free willed yourself into some other, you know, rat hole. You'll eventually get to your destination, whatever that is, no matter what you do or how much you procrastinate. Okay. I wasn't saying I wanted to be pastor of this church this year. I was thinking of something in the future. But the, not the, the sequence of events led me to be the pastor this year. So I accept it. Am I, was I absolutely ready for it? 95% ready. Okay. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. I was just going to say, is there, um, as far as free will and divine will, like when you just show up for things that are in your life, like you say, there's a sequence. So when things just show up and you show up for it, that seems to be more of a divine will because it's showing up and then you're just taking it and going with it. If you look at everything as a learning experience, yeah. whatever you do, wherever you are, it's a learning experience. You might learn how not to react, or you might learn how to better react. You might be put in a situation where you see someone doing something horrible, and you learn from their mistakes. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like that. So you're always put in situations where you're going to learn to be a better person. Well, it's up to you to have the consciousness to realize that's what you're there for, and that's what you're learning. Because I think Earl or someone was saying, people go through life not thinking about other things. You know, I, I don't know how they do that, but they, they do. 
think a good parallel here is, is like everybody goes through school, your you know, kindergarten all the way through high school and maybe farther. You can't make decisions when you're in grade four that you need to be up to grade 10. Right. And, but you may want it because you have free will say, well, I want that, I want that. Well, you're not going to get it until you go through the other grades first. So you may have free will, but that doesn't mean you're going to get what you want until you're ready to get what you want. It's going to drive you nuts if, you, <laughs> if you're thinking everyone's, situ everyone's situation is different. So everyone's on their own path. They're on their own lesson. Earl's talking about his, his life in particular. You're talking about yours. You're talking about yours. You're talking about yours. We're all right. There are no wrongs in your, in your development and in your path. There's just there's the left lane and the right lane. That's my new book, The Left Lane and the Right Lane. No one steals it. We've got about five minutes. But no, but see, yesterday a terrible thing happened to me, and I feel like that it just was meant to be. And I shouldn't have, it, 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 I wanted to go to my friend's memorial service. And it was a family thing, and I was like the only non family member. And they were by the seat of the pants on the plans. And the last thing I knew was they were going to meet four or five o'clock at the White Sands Buddhist Center. So I called around three saying, I'd like to go and meditate earlier. I'd like to be there. And the response is, because they are all by the seat of their pants and planning, it happened at 11 o'clock. <laughs> you, you missed no, it. No, and I was terribly sad because I really wanted to go to the memorial. And my thought at the time, and I felt close to Dory spiritually about it, was well, they just wanted the family. They were talking. Maybe that was, and it was. It What's was the like, lady's name? I Dorothy. I was supposed to be there. Her name was Dorothy. Yes. You can talk to Dorothy anytime. You no 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 it's Dory. And Dory. That's confusion in my Dory. Mind because they call her Dory. I thought that was a short, and I thought I heard Dory. Dory, you can talk to her anytime. No, I do all the time. They're always there. Anything else? I just wanted to say, um, I learned this years ago, that every single choice I make will have challenges and will have rewards. Every choice I make. And the hard part in life is sitting on the fence with the post up your butt. You know, so whenever I'm challenged with making a decision, I know that if I choose this road, there's going to be traffic and stoplights and whatever. If I choose this road, there might be potholes and da-da-da. Each one's going to have it. But sitting here not making a choice for me has always been the most painful mm -hmm. place to be. I hear you. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. I call those life lessons. Yes, they are. Life you lessons. You get involved with and you grow from that. But you have to realize it's a lesson in order to learn from it. All right, so we're going to end our Lyceum today. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being here online. And please stay for our 1030 service. Thank you. Have a great day.